All right, what's up, people? Welcome to the channel. Uh, my name is Glenn van Geldorp. I'm gonna. I'm from the Netherlands. I'm gonna take you on a little journey on how I started as an OnlyFans management agency, uh, where I'm at right now, and what I've been doing over the past month or so, a little bit longer, I guess. Um, and I'm gonna take you in depth, literally, on, on on what the finances look like, how you can do this on a very very small budget, as I did start with a very small budget, not because I didn't have any budget to begin with, but just because. I always want to see if a business can make money uh, while, while you're starting it small, right? So if it can pay out, uh, then I'm uh, highly likely to be able to grow it because that, mean, uh, that means basically that you have a positive cash flow. So I wrote a couple things down here, kind of how my journey looked like. I put some finances in there so I can really break down for you uh, what the costs for me were uh, until now and uh, how much we have been able to return. So to start off with, we are not in profit yet. So um, basically uh, has to do with a couple of things that I've been investing in. And I think, and I rather uh, suggest you do the same thing, uh, go around the same path, <laughs> unless you already have some kind of experience, uh, this will be a good way to uh, um, to approach it. Um, now over the last couple of days, we're really starting to see an increase in revenue. So I'm pretty sure that uh, a couple of uh switches will happen there um I'll, I'll be updating you about this in in the next video basically uh, but this whole idea like where did it come from right um i was actually at a festival tomorrowland in belgium uh one of the biggest ones in the world i believe so most people know it and i was there with a friend of mine uh he's a russian guy uh, he lives in thailand uh the reason i know him is because i used to be a professional football player and i played for six seasons in thailand so we became friends there. We always kept contact. He obviously traveled from Thailand to um, to Belgium, which is right next door to the Netherlands where I'm from. And uh, we went up and meet there. And he was, he was all the time talking about this idea. And that's kind of where, where it sparked my interest, right? So uh, <laughs> I kind of uh, got it going in my mind for, for quite for, for a while until I basically decided to start Googling. Uh, until then, uh, I already quit my uh, football career, so I've, I've been doing e-com. I've sold a brand uh, that I built from 2017 to 2020 to an American company. And after that, I was just doing drop shipping. Um, and I got interested in other businesses just because uh, drop shipping is a great model to make money, but um, I don't believe in it in, in the long term in terms of like quality. And I feel like I'm not really giving my customers a lot of um, the word for what they're paying for, right? Because most of it are cheap products from China. Some of them are good, some of them are not. And I decided to switch. So uh, I came across a, lo a lot of YouTube videos, basically. And there was one guy that kind of uh, sparked out to me uh, with the information he had. His name was Nathan Ashton. Um, so I bought his course. Uh, that was about, that was the first investment. It was on the 24th of July. It was about... 500, uh, 500 euro uh, for his course. And I just enrolled and a couple days later, uh, I started to go through the content because I still had open like a lot of YouTube videos of other uh, people and other people with information about the business. So what I did is I went through his whole course a couple days later um, and it wasn't until, let's see here, uh, the 26th of July, oh, actually one day later, I already went through the course and then the 26th of July, um, he had a method of how to acquire like uh, girls and since um, I just decided that I'm going to take on his methods I signed up for a website called Seeking Seeking Arrangement I think it's called for an, and I paid 100 euro for um, a, a month membership and there you get to talk like uh, to um, basically to girls that are seeking for a, um, a, a an arrangement really so these are girls already uh, looking to have I guess uh, sex with most likely all the men and are willing to get paid for that. So um, not being able, not having to do that basically will definitely sort them out. Uh, I, I, I was thinking so, and, and, and as well as Nathan suggested that uh, they'd be more happy to make some money on OnlyFans where they don't have to actually meet someone and most likely can earn a lot, a lot more money. Um, so I kind of implemented that, uh, started checking here and there. Uh, starting to pitch um, basically what what I would be doing. At this time, I was still doing e-commerce, so I was kind of half-half into it. 
which I definitely uh, don't recommend. You either go all in or you don't. So if you don't have at least like a couple hours a day free in order to do this, uh, it's most likely going to be a lot harder, which I uh, found out it was for me. Um, but yeah, so I did that and it wasn't uh, too much later um, that I actually um, stopped with Ecom, which was the August of the, the 3rd of August. Mixed a couple things up here, <laughs> but it's okay. So, um, uh, and I started to go all in. I got uh, some good contacts here left and right, uh, which really helped me out here. Um, because um, through his Telegram group, uh, I got in contact with a guy, who, uh, his name is Sean. Uh, he was telling me his method and how he does reach out. So I got a, a lot of chats going on on Seek and Arrangement now. And I, I, in the meantime, I was building my um, my website, uh, which I spent like two, $250 for, I believe. Um, and I was building out the Instagram. So I had a couple days in, uh, created some posts, used Canva and uh, some free um some free uh, websites like pexels where you can get like model pictures for free copyright free i mean um and and i use that to set up the instagram account i bought some followers to uh just another pedal panel i only knew this because i was already in, in ecom and i have used the panel before i highly uh, recommend you use that one it's very cheap to get to buy likes followers and stuff like that um and it started to look like a really nice you know uh management page a agency uh page for my uh agency so i bought a domain i mean i thought of a name uh, it's called i need more management and i built the website and i got in contact with um someone else through uh, nathan's group who said like hey you know just hop on a call i am happy to share a couple things with you and her name was lily she uh, i had a call with her for about two hours maybe um, it took two hours of her time and she kind of rolled me through all the things that I had to, would most valuable to me, how to set up the only plan. So I recorded that. I was like, okay, once I sign a goal, a uh, girl, sorry, I know exactly what to do. So that one was definitely very, very val valuable for me because it was kind of like a shortcut. I never been on the platform before. Like I never had an account. I never even accessed one. So I created my own account. Um, and um, started to play around a little bit from the things she showed me. Um, obviously, I didn't post anything, but I wanted to be prepared when I signed a go. Um, back to Sean, he, he teach me how to do the reach out, and I was actually doing that through him uh, on um, uh, in, in South American countries. So not much later, uh, I signed two girls actually at the same time. I was planning to do one, but I found two that were really good, although I thought so. I, I found multiple, by the way. Um, but I read along in the group of Nathan, uh, his telegram group that where they said, like, you need to really find someone that works hard rather than someone that looks pretty. So I took that to heart and I actually skipped on a, a couple of girls, even on the beginning, um, you know, these models didn't seem to be able to work that hard, even though I only asked them for one or two hours a day. Uh, and I set the expectations, right. And I highly, uh, suggest you do the same thing make sure you set the expectation that they're gonna have to make one or two hours a day free in order to create content. And then it's gonna last them at least three months before you're gonna get results. And that in the fourth month, you're really gonna get, get some really, really nice return, returns. Of course, you tell them with the months before that, you will, they will also make money, uh, but the first three months are gonna be, gonna be content intensive. And, and it has been so far. Like one of the two girls, like before I even started, uh, I sent her all the content that I needed from her and she started to already come with excuses. As soon as that came, um, I literally told her like, listen, this is not gonna work for now. Uh, when I have contact to uh, another time for this month, we're full. Uh, obviously I played it off a little bit bigger than we were because <laughs> we only had two. I said, uh, I, I'm gonna give my, um, my staff and resources to someone else, another girl that is more motivated. Uh, let's talk in a, in a month from now. And just a quick fast forward, she actually came back not much later saying like, hey, I'm so ready right now. I'm sorry, I had some personal issues. Please uh, help me out. So uh, perhaps I'm gonna give her a second chance, but the way I'm gonna structure it is I'm gonna tell her to make uh, at least three weeks of content, no day missed. And I, I'm gonna tell her upfront, I'm not gonna do any of the marketing. I'm not gonna do any of the promotion. Uh, until you've done that. So, um, and she actually said she, she's gonna be fine with that. So we'll have to find out uh, that was supposed to start next week. So uh, I'm just waiting for her to get back uh, to it and then uh, start creating the content. 
let's rewind it back a little bit. Uh, assign the model. Um, according to Nathan's method, there's a couple things you could do for promotion. And I decided early on that I'm gonna focus on TikTok, Tinder. Uh, obviously, he also teaches Reddit, uh, Instagram mother slave, and I guess the mother slave method for Twitter is kind of similar. Uh, and it seemed to me that mother slave is gonna be very, very time intensive, especially if you do it alone. You can't do that alone. I'm, I started off alone, so that's what I wanted to do. Tinder is gonna be more expensive because you need to uh, buy physical phones. At least that's the way uh, he does it. So I started buying uh, five phones. I think I spent on a couple of iPhone 7 and SEs, 350 euro um, so far. And um, I set three of them up. Uh, one of them um, with a Tinder and Bumble account and Instagram, two Instagrams actually of, of, of my model. And the other two phones I put in a USA SIM card uh, that, that I still had from traveling to the US. I uh, don't know why I saved that, but I guess it uh, came out uh, really really well so i saved those two sim cards i put them into two iphone 7s and on all both two phones i created three tiktok accounts all slightly uh, a little bit different and um all three of them i was gonna early on decided like okay i'm gonna need volume in in order to make something happen there and at the end of posting for like at least a month three tiktoks a day on uh, six accounts i should have some results if not at least i know um, in what direction I should move. So we've been posting, I think I started on the 4th of September, uh, by the time we got set up with, uh, with all the accounts, uh, obviously I needed her to set up a, a bank account, uh, verify, verify her only fence account. Uh, definitely suggest you Google, uh, things like that first before you start with a model. So you're not going to make any mistakes. Um, and then Actually, uh, before that, I bought two more courses because I wasn't sure if, if, if I knew enough to get this started. So on the 26th of uh, August, I bought two more courses. Forgot the guy's name. Oh, actually, one is called uh, The Mac Life. He has a YouTube channel as well. Um, really cool videos. His course is, wasn't really useful, but I did get in his uh, Discord and got some uh, really good value out of there. So um, I, I actually that actually inspired me to do something else later on, which I'm going to get back to. And the other guy, um, uh, Cairo Chong, he actually had some good good stuff in there in terms of um, uh, automations and stuff like that. Definitely something I tried out as well, tried out as well, and I suggest you do uh, if you do have the chance. I think it's only a hundred euro for that one, and from the Mac, I think it's somewhat around that as well. So I spent another two hundred uh, on courses. And um, yeah, after stepping away, uh, I started posting on TikTok, stepping away from e-com, I mean, and going all in. I started posting three times a day on TikTok. Uh, actually, from day one, it's kind of was slow. And then I had one or two accounts that would have like a video with like 500 views. Uh, and that would already rake in some followers, like 20, 30. So I was like, okay, this is going well. So I decided to, I'm going to do that for another 30 days. And I haven't hit, hit the 30 days yet. But we're consistently posting and actually found a couple of videos that went viral in, in the meanwhile, uh, which, which is really cool. Uh, and the same on 4 September, I also started with Tinder. So I set it up on a physical device to begin with. Uh, but right before that, um, because I was in the Max um, uh, Discord, actually what I found is a guy that he, he said he was doing 100 to 200 Tinder accounts. He's not using... Um, he's not using any physical devices. He said he's using hackers. He was a bit vague about it. I tried to contact him, didn't reply. Um, um, and he was using uh, hackers. Uh, he said, I, I don't know, even know what my team does because um, I stopped listening when they started using proxies. And because I have a little bit of an e-com background and, and, and navigating Facebook was uh, one of the hardest things for me. <laughs> Uh, at least, and, and I used to use uh, Incogniton with proxies in order to uh, make Facebook at least somewhat believe that I was a, a new user, or at least someone that was always in the same space um, uh, connecting to the account. So what I did is I went to Upwork, and it was this, this, this has been big for me as well, and try to find people that could help out with uh, Tinder automation. And I went through a couple of developers. Some of them really, really had a very nice plan uh, laid out. Uh, but it was this one girl named Stephanie. Um, and she's from the Philippines. And she actually said she did something like that uh, for someone already until last week. So I was like, 
this has to be an opportunity. I started to uh, write her like, let's go hop on a call, let's do it. Obviously, uh, unfortunately, she didn't speak English that well. So what I did is uh, we just keep contact and chat. Well, normally uh, when I hire staff, I have quite a big interview um, uh, laid out in order to see if I I'm gonna be uh, willing to work with this person. But since she had a, a solution I, I, and she was the only one, I didn't really have any, any uh, options. So what I did, Instead, as I, I just hired her, I said, let's make an example, show me you can do it uh, and do it exactly. And then give me all the steps on how to do it. Um, don't worry, I'm not gonna take it and then do it myself. We're gonna do this together. But I said, I wanna be able to do it so I can test a couple things out to see if we can make it better. So we started setting up. I think by now we set up 105 accounts um, on the digital uh, browser, I think that's called. And only 15 of them uh, are actually live. Um, we got a couple more uh, that are working, uh, I think five more, but we ran out of ways to do the payment for Tinder Gold. Now that's not absolutely necessary, but for those accounts, we wanted to use it and they're, they're ready to be used. So uh, I'm actually figuring that out right now to, to be able to get more, more credit cards, different names, uh, etc., in order to navigate that. But basically the result of those 105 accounts is that only 20 of them would work. Um, 15 are live, five more can be live uh, as soon as we figure out the payment method. So only one fifth, and we've been doing this for, I think she started the 10, the, the, no, sorry, the fifth. So almost 20 days, a little bit less. And you can understand how time intensive it is for her to set that up because these proxies uh, are usually pretty slow uh, and she's working on that. And then we get banned and then she's putting a lot of time in because what she does is she buys SIM, SIM cards you need a couple uh, other things to verify accounts, you need Gmails, and all of that uh, take, takes in a lot of time for her because she's been working on it for 20 days and she only has 100 uh, somewhat accounts set up. Now, the difference here is that she does everything by herself. Um, so that's a little bit hard uh, on her because normally I would say, hey, um, this person, if I'm, if I'm gonna be hiring more people, right? You're just gonna make 20 accounts every day. So that, that would uh, already, uh, build up that, that momentum for build, uh, making accounts. Another person, listen, you're only going to do swipes and you're only going to manage the accounts that, that do or do not work and try to fix them. Uh, I think we would be at least a double. Um, also, I didn't want to go too fast because I want to find the best way. Obviously, a lot of things we do don't work uh, and it's pretty it's been pretty costly. I think we spent about 500 on resources uh, in order to set this up. Uh, and um, obviously salary, which should be like around 250. That will make a total of 750 already spent. And um, and yeah, in, in the meantime, uh, while we're doing that, we keep posting on TikTok. So the operational cost just for Tinder is already like $850. Uh, I bought a couple of courses. In the, in the meantime, I bought another uh, course of Kyle Plummer. Uh, it's another 500 euro. Um, I just thought um, he, I, he comes from e-com as well. I just thought if he at least explains the things he does, the way uh, e-com courses look uh, with way, way more in depth on how to set things up, how to tweak, uh, tweak the important settings. Um, he has a couple things like that, not a lot, uh, but it, I think uh, because he's still building on it, it will be worth it in the end. Um, and of course he only, I think he only started like three months ago or something and he's set to be doing six figures. So uh, in profit, so that's pretty fast. Obviously, it's going to be um, faster than me because I'm started since um, August. It's 25, I guess, 25. Is it the 25th? 23rd, sorry, the 23rd of September now. And um, actually, the, the results been coming in now. And it's, it's very fun to see that you see, if, if you see the, the link tree that I use for the, for the model, um, there, there's a slow increase and then there's two times a peak, uh, one uh, pretty early on, like after six or seven days. And there's another peak, uh, right, like two days ago. And the, the slow buildup is from more and more Tinder accounts. And the peaks are from random TikTok videos that actually go viral. And those, those peaks are way more, um, they bring in way more revenue than, than anything in terms of subscriptions. But I see, and because we, we actually are on the OnlyFans platform, asking the people, um, hey, where did you come from? How did you find me? Something like that. Doing it myself now in order to learn. 
um, actually know that the people that spend the money so that, that we are being able to send the PPV to, they are the ones that uh, actually spend money, they come from Tinder. Uh, so it seems to be that that's a little bit of a higher quality of traffic, uh, but the volume definitely comes from TikTok as soon as you have a video that go viral. So the slow buildup is really, really nice to see. And then the second thing I see is because obviously the Instagram account that we made was bought with a couple of followers, but like two and a half, no, no, 2000 followers, 1800, sorry, 1800 it was, 1800 followers uh, posted like 15 pictures um, that, that she already had that were like a very regular um, Instagram and that the click through rate on that, um, on the link tree was way, way higher now. And I'm pretty sure that has to do with the, um, towards the end, right? So I'm pretty sure that has everything to do with the social proving. We have 30, I think 40 something uh, posts now. I think up to 50 would be good and more than 2000 followers. So that's uh, another thing uh, we've been increasing. Obviously the bot followers, some of them go down and but we've been getting a lot of followers, especially through Tinder that um, just sign up and uh, tons of messages and, and some of that uh, converts. And I just calculated yesterday, I think we have a 2.1 conversion rate from the people that actually click on uh, the link in Linktree towards being a subscriber. So that's, I think, pretty decent. Obviously, uh, we're trying to um, optimize that and social approval only make those things better. Um, but yeah, after five days of posting on TikTok, so it was around the 10th of September, it's only 15 days ago, 13 days ago, is when we got our first subscriber. Um, I'm not sure if it came from Tinder. I'm not sure if it came from TikTok. It's uh, very hard to track. Both of them don't allow you to uh, put any link. Um, so from TikTok, we send them to Instagram, from Instagram uh, through the link tree to OnlyFans. And for Tinder, it is we send them to Instagram and from Instagram through the link tree. So it's very hard to track where it actually came from, except for when we're in the chat and ask, hey, how did you find me? And we're trying to keep, um, keep track of that. Um, coming from an e-commerce background, it's very important to track your data. Um, and this is the best way for us to do it right now. I think it will be better if eventually uh, we own the traffic or maybe even split out the traffic sources. Let's say you have two different Instagram accounts. One is only uh, using Tinder promotion. The other one is only using TikTok promotion. Um, that's why I'm building a, a backup account, uh, which is posting simultaneously with the other one. Uh, I just didn't buy any followers and stuff like that uh, on, on the backup account. Um, another thing uh, from another course is like, uh, I've been trying out some bots and automations some follow on follow uh, with a slow build up um, just to find out for me personally, like if I'm gonna eventually invest in the mother slave method, um, how, how will the returns look like? Obviously those accounts don't have the social proofing yet, but it seems like it, it, it gets you quite some followers, but the, the click to rate uh, hasn't been so high. So I just estimated that you need at least like 20 slave accounts in order to uh, make it significant in order to have 20 slave accounts you need like a full-time employee if you're going to do it manually uh and able to do them uh to do that i've been i've been on our work as well searching for mother slave method automations um and there are some cool people out there and some developers that, that think they're going to be able to make it work um i'll definitely invest in that but um i decided that before i go and do that there's two things that i need to do first uh master tinder um, both both physical devices and uh, offline. I haven't invested in physical yet. I'm just been um, doing it online with, uh, well, I guess you call it um, uh, emulators or something. And it's been working quite all right. The return is not there yet. Uh, and then I want to master this TikTok, which we're getting better and better results uh, on right now. Uh, and the last thing uh, that I actually seen right now is that yesterday as well, we started to post some reels, actually a TikTok, remove the watermark, right? And post it on Reels. And some of them actually uh, did really, really well, get over five, 6,000 views, uh, completely organic. And I don't think a lot of that traffic converted to like OnlyFans, but a lot of that uh, traffic helped us with followers and, and uh, social proving. So we're definitely gonna keep doing that. Um, yeah, 100% we're gonna keep doing that because we've seen, uh, we've seen it work. And uh, the backup account, I stopped the following on following thing. I just wanted to know like what the results could possibly look like. And I definitely suggest anyone uh, to always have a backup account because 
if Instagram decides for whatever reason that your account should not be live whatsoever, um, at least you have a backup account to continue on. And if you have a long history of posts, um, that's definitely going to help you out. We've seen the increase uh, in people clicking through. So, uh, yeah. Um, and then um, from the 10th, uh, when we got our first subscriber until yesterday, I think we got 30 subscribers so far, uh, which raked in about, we, we charge uh, $5 per subscription. So you can do the maths, it's $150. Um, obviously, um, we get to chat with the people as well. And um, that's where we make most of the money, another 800. So we're, we're totaling uh, just under 1K as of today. And um, obviously 20% goes to uh, OnlyFans itself. So we're only uh, left with 80% of that. Now, the next thing is that we pay the model 50%. So more or less $400 is made um, for us. And if you total up all the costs so far, um, I think it comes down to $2,400. Um, so we're, we're about like $2,000 in loss, which is okay because we've kind of finally start uh, to build that snowball and it starts to roll in the last couple of days. And most important here is that the operational cost for TikTok and Tinder so far has been around $750. It's, I mean, it's almost only uh, for uh, Tinder. And TikTok obviously is um, free because uh, you post and you only have the cost of buying three phones, two phones, sorry. Um, so the, the bigger costs have already been made uh, in order to keep this going. Tinder, we need to keep investing in, in proxies, new SIM cards, um, etc. And obviously staff because I have Stephanie doing that for me. So that's gonna keep going. Uh, but all the other costs, um, website, buying courses, um, buying the phones. Those are the biggest of the two and a half thousand I've spent, 2,400 I've spent so far. And I don't need to make those costs again, unless I'm going to onboard like another uh, model. Of course, you're going to have the same cost and uh, you're going to be able to make that back uh, later on. So I think in a week from now, I'm going to be uh, recording an update where we can really see if we really uh, uh, did well. Uh, I think 1,000 for the very first time uh, in the very first, well, I guess it's 25 days of uh, starting this, 20 days, sorry, 20 days of starting this business is not that bad. Uh, I'm sure there's guys that do a lot, lot better. Maybe they have a different background, know things that I don't know, uh, but I'm going to find out what they are and, and, and we're definitely going to grow that. So yeah, um, if you calculate it um, uh, like this, you have to know that normally uh, your gross profit is your most important number um, because that's where you can play around. Um, you got 20% uh, being taken off by OnlyFans. You're left with 80. Of that 80, uh, you get 50% of the model. I will, when I have more experience and uh, be able to prove more results, try to change that um, to more towards 40, 60, maybe even 30, 70, because it just gives you uh, such a higher margin to work with uh, and to be able to grow with. And the model gets more than more than enough because that amount of difference, being able to reinvest uh, in the model's growth uh, is gonna just, is gonna make her money then 50-50. Um, I, I need to fi figure out the exact number so I can explain that as well. Um, a current model, uh, she most likely will not take the 40-60 or the 30-70 deal, uh, but I will definitely pitch it to her and, and give her the reasons why. Um, your gross margin, 50-50. Uh, um, is normally like 50% margin is normally not good at all. Um, in e-commerce, I would, I'd like to say around 80, uh, at least. So if I have a product that, I, that is $3, uh, for shipping and, and the product itself, I'd, I'd like to sell it at like 20, at least, um, at least 18, uh, to have the 20% margin. Um, because when you break it down to your net margin, it's going to make all the difference. So let's say you have a 50% uh, gross margin like we have now, you, um, the model doesn't cover any costs, right? We cover all the costs for marketing. So if you deduct uh, all, the, all the marketing costs and you have, let's say 15% uh, net margin, uh, I would love to draw this out for you. So if you have left 15% net margin, if you drop your gross, mar if you drop your um, gross margin, if it would be 60, 40, do I add another 10%? And now you say, 
well, if you had 15 and now you have 25, that's not a big difference. Um, that you have to do that calculation again, because that's completely wrong. Because that's, then, sorry, how much is that? That's almost a 40% increase on, on, your, on your income, on your profit, sorry. Maybe even 50, no, 40% 40 in, 40 increase on your income. So let's say at the end of the year, you make 60,000. If you have a 40% income, uh, in, increase, you suddenly make uh, 85,000. So I hope the math is right there, but uh, either way, either way, don't underestimate uh, what you can do in gross margin. There's only two ways to improve it. You drop the cost um, that you're making right now, um, or you increase the price. Now the increase in price, we try to sell premiums uh, in the chatting, um, but it's a little bit of a variable because you sell different pieces of content and not everyone buys it all. Some buy some uh, of the content, some buy the whole, the whole thing. Some people come back later and buy uh, something else. So we have to figure out our lifetime value of the, of the customer as well. That's going to take a year. Um, of course, we're going to have an estimate before, but at least a year in order to be able to make that better. All with all, we made uh, $1,000. Um, half of it goes to the model, half of it goes to us, $500. We spent $2,400. Uh, let's see what, how this looks next week. I'll update you how everything goes. This is, I think, the most important video for you to or in order for you to understand what the timeline looks like. So it's been two months now. Yeah, two months, uh, more or less, uh, that I've been doing this. First three weeks were kind of like half-half because I was doing uh, e-com as well. And then after that, I went all in. And that's also when I signed the model, when the money was made uh, and everything else. So I'm going to keep you guys updated. Uh, if you like the video, obviously subscribe um, as well as like, like it. That would definitely help me out. If not, no problem. I keep sharing this. I also do this for me. So um, see you guys in the next one. Peace.